Jimmy Sabatino, an infamous Miami con man, got his start as a career criminal at the age of 18 when he somehow convinced the Broward County FedEx station that he was the president of the Miami Dolphins under the pretense that he was a multi-millionaire pro sports executive. Sabatino managed to get his hands on $268,000 worth of Super Bowl tickets. Following the criminal conviction that followed, he spent two years in prison. Over the next few decades, Sabatino continued to face legal troubles, including multiple stints behind bars in connection with his elaborate deceptions. While he was incarcerated in New York, the man reportedly operated a complicated scheme from his prison cell. He stole a thousand cell phones by claiming to work for a production company, then sold them on the black market with the help of his associates. After serving additional time for the phone con, Sabatino returned to Miami where he began posing as big wig music executives to scam high-end hotels and casinos out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The man would pretend to represent prominent artists and music labels such as Jay-Z's Rock Nation and Sony Records. He would then rack up exorbitant hotel bills by reserving presidential suites and splurging on room service. Over one five-week period, Sabatino reportedly accumulated nearly $600,000 in unpaid expenses. In 2014, he was sentenced to five years in prison for the hotel scam and was also ordered to pay $594,000 in restitution. While serving his sentence, Sabatino quickly returned to his old ways by convincing corrupt correctional officers to smuggle him a cell phone. He then used the device to contact jewelry companies, telling them he worked for celebrities like Jennifer Lopez, Justin Timberlake, and Jessica Alba. From his prison cell, Sabatino swindled over $10 million worth of jewelry, the majority of which was never recovered. After the jewelry case was prosecuted, the notorious con man received another 20-year prison sentence. In 2023, it was reported that Sabatino was being housed in a special unit inside the federal prison in Colorado known as Supermax. Aside from his attorney, he is only permitted to contact one person on the outside, his stepmother, whom he is allowed to call twice a month for no more than 15 minutes per phone call. Number 5. Madison Marie Russo A 19-year-old college student from Iowa used social media to document her medical journey following an alleged stage 2 cancer diagnosis in February of 2022. Madison Marie Russo told the press that she'd been experiencing bloody stools, nosebleeds and fevers, which prompted her to get checked by a doctor. She said she was in class at St. Ambrose University, a private Catholic school in Davenport, when she received word that her medical test results were in. Russo said that the doctors told her she had stage 2 pancreatic cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia and a tumor the size of a football that wrapped around her spine. The young woman subsequently turned to TikTok to tell the world about her purported health battles, garnering considerable online sympathy in the process. She set up a GoFundMe page, supposedly for the purpose of collecting donations to cover her medical bills. More than $37,000 was donated to Russo's cause before people began noticing irregularities in her TikTok videos. On January the 11th of 2023, the police received an anonymous tip from someone claiming to be a medical professional. The witness indicated that in many of the clips posted by Russo, the placement of tubes and medical equipment on her body was inaccurate to a life-threatening degree. A search warrant was executed at the young woman's apartment where officials recovered a brown paper bag containing an IV pole with a feeding pump filled with cotton swabs, a wig, and nausea medication meant for a relative. A subpoena of her medical records revealed that she'd never been diagnosed with any form of cancer. Russo was arrested on first-degree theft charge, a felony which carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison in the state of Iowa. She initially pleaded not guilty before reaching a deal with prosecutors in June. Her sentencing was scheduled to take place in October of 2023. Number 4. Maria Christina Johnson During the spring of 2016, law enforcement arrested a serial con artist by the name of Maria Christina Johnson. The 43-year-old was apprehended at a luxury resort hotel in Santa Barbara, California. She was taken to Century Regional Detention Facility where she was held on a $2 million bond. Prior to her arrest, 
Johnson reportedly drained $250,000 from the latest victim of her romance scamming, which spanned multiple states over the course of several years. The woman was repeatedly accused of dating or renting from victims in order to gain access to their homes. She would then obtain their sensitive personal information to open new lines of credit without their knowledge. Johnson's criminal history dates all the way back to 1997, when she was accused of identity theft in Washington state. After serving two years behind bars, she returned to her scheming ways, at certain times posing as a modeling agency manager, a dog trainer, and even a member of NASCAR's Hendrick Motorsports team. She used her elaborate lies to manipulate vulnerable men into falling for her so that she could gain access to their finances. Johnson used many different aliases and identities over the years, making it difficult for investigators to know exactly how many people she scammed. Number 3. William Hickson A con man from Gateshead in Tynanware, England, was searched at the 4th Banks Police Station in Newcastle in connection with an arrest from 18 months prior. During the search, officers uncovered 41 cash bills concealed in William Hickson's socks. The cash amounted to 820 pounds or just over a thousand US dollars. Although police found it strange that Hickson had that much money in his socks, it didn't immediately arouse actionable suspicion. However, law enforcement eventually noticed that each of the bills in Hickson's possession had been printed with the exact same serial number. The money was then closely inspected by experts from the Bank of England. They determined that not only were the bills graced with identical serial numbers, they each featured the same prominent typo as well. Rather than reading 20 pound above the images of economist Adam Smith and pin factory workers, the note read 20 pound. While crafting the counterfeit bills, Hickson and his associates had inadvertently substituted the slang word pound common among those from Tyneside or a neighboring region of Northeast England. The 33-year-old consequently faced the charge of possessing counterfeit currency, to which he pleaded guilty. At Newcastle Crown Court in November of 2022, Hickson was sentenced to 23 months behind bars, suspended for 18 months. Number 2. Elizabeth Jones British woman Elizabeth Jones was jailed after making 11 false assault allegations over the course of a decade. The young woman from Southampton first claimed to have been abused in 2004 at the age of 13, but her report was discredited. Then between 2005 and 2007, Jones made eight additional assault claims, all of which were duly investigated and dismissed. She first faced legal repercussions for her compulsive lying in 2009 when she was given a 10-month detention and training order. Jones resurfaced in national headlines in February of 2013 when she was taken to court in connection with yet another made-up accusation. The young woman reportedly convinced a friend to falsely report that she'd been assaulted. Jones then went to the police station for a medical examination and reiterated the allegation. The man accused of committing the attack was subsequently brought in for questioning. He was grilled by detectives for nine hours before being released without charge. As it turned out, CCTV footage from the area where Jones claimed to have been assaulted didn't support her story. She was arrested on a charge of attempting to pervert the course of justice to which she pleaded guilty. She admitted to lying about the attack because she simply didn't like the man and they'd gotten into an argument. During court proceedings, the judge admonished Jones for her pathological tendency to falsely accuse people of criminal activity before jailing her for 16 months. Upon being informed of his accuser's punishment, the victim said he was disappointed and felt that the time wasn't long enough after what she put him through. When stealing people's identities goes wrong is coming up right after number one. Stay tuned if you have yet to see that one. Number one, Alan Todd May. After being caught running a multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme, Colorado man, Alan Todd May was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison on February the 10th of 2012. Roughly six years into his sentence, May made international headlines once again on December the 21st of 2018 
Officials from the Bureau of Prisons conducted a prison account at the Federal Correctional Institute in Englewood, Colorado, where May was incarcerated. An inmate later determined to be May was found to be missing. As it would ultimately emerge, May had somehow gotten behind the wheel of a Bureau of Prisons truck and escaped without arousing any suspicion. He then rented a U-Haul truck, which was later found abandoned behind a Waffle House in Fort Worth, Texas. An escape warrant was issued and U.S. Marshals began an extensive search effort that lasted the better part of five years. In December of 2022, May was spotted at his mother's Houston home but managed to flee before the arrival of authorities, so his trail went cold again. Then in June of 2023, the police were tipped off about May's appearance at a fundraiser for the Palm Beach Society. He posed with prominent local figures for photographs, some of which were subsequently published on the Palm Beach Daily News website. A tipster informed law enforcement about the pictures. After further investigation, it was established that May had been living in a $1.5 million mansion in Fort Lauderdale under the alias Jacob Turner. The con man was arrested and booked at the Palm Beach County Jail before his eventual extradition to Colorado. May's original prison sentence stemmed from accusations that he'd lied about being the owner of unclaimed oil and gas royalties in multiple different U.S. states. He faced further charges after scamming an additional $700,000 while behind bars by setting up fake energy companies. The latest updates provided in August of 2023 indicated that investigators hadn't yet determined whether May committed any additional fraud during his five years on the run. Number 8. Juliet Parker On February the 14th of 2020, deputies of the Pierce County Sheriff's Department in Washington arrested a woman and her teenage daughter on suspicion of attempted kidnapping and assault. The authorities had initially launched an investigation into the matter on February the 5th after receiving a call from a new mom claiming to have been drugged. The caller reported feeling numb, drowsy and unstable on her feet following a session with a photographer she'd met in a newborn baby Facebook group. It subsequently came to light that the purported photographer was actually a serial scammer who'd adopted several different aliases over the years, including Juliet Parker, Juliet Noel, and Juliet Gaines. The resulting police report described how Parker had posed as a photographer to target mothers of newborns. She'd gone to the victim's house on three separate occasions to photograph her five-week-old child. During the third session, Parker and her 16-year-old daughter reportedly gave the homeowner a cupcake laced with some sort of sedative. After beginning to feel the effects of the substances, the victim asked the mother and daughter to leave. But when they did, she noticed that her house keys were nowhere to be found. Investigators determined that Parker had devised an elaborate plot to steal the woman's newborn baby to raise it as her own. The suspect pleaded not guilty to her charges before posting her $150,000 bail. As of the latest updates on the case, Parker's legal proceedings were still ongoing. Number 7. Dwayne Kohais Signs on September the 22nd of 2018, a Frederick County Sheriff's deputy encountered a man wearing a black shirt, black pants, and a black hat with narcotics written on it at High's Gas Station and Convenience Store in Maryland. The man later identified as 48-year-old Dwayne Kohais Sines proceeded to engage the officer in polite conversation. Shortly thereafter, the deputy noticed that there was a hat in Sines' truck that had police printed on it and the man was also found to be in possession of a police-style badge. Signs was subsequently asked to produce his law enforcement identification, and after flipping through his wallet as though searching for it, he couldn't provide it. He was then arrested and charged with several criminal counts, including disorderly conduct and making a false statement to a law enforcement officer. The Frederick County Sheriff's Office later revealed that officers seized a handgun, a shotgun, ammunition, unprescribed oxycodone and a container of a green powdery substance from Sainz's vehicle. It was reported that upon his arrest, the police impersonator was denied bail pending the commencement of his trial. Number 6. Mildred Santa Maria Tirado 
an elderly New Jersey man received a phone call on April the 15th of 2022 in which an individual claiming to work for the FBI informed him that his daughter had been arrested for possessing 100 pounds of illicit substances. To secure her release, the 80-year-old Hamilton Township resident was told that he'd need to produce a portion of her $200,000 bail. A short time later, having reportedly secured $15,000 to bail out his daughter, the man called the purported FBI agent, who indicated that they'd be sending someone over to pick up the funds. Before the transaction was completed, however, the elderly man got in contact with his daughter, who denied having been arrested, at which point he realized he'd been scammed. He called Hamilton police, who promptly sent an officer to his home. Detective Thomas Clugston arrived on the scene just as the resident was speaking with Mildred Santa Maria Terraro on his front porch. The latter was identified as the FBI imposter and consequently arrested on a charge of theft by deception. Number 5. Francesco Galdelli on June the 15th of 2019, 58-year-old Francesco Galdelli was arrested at his home on the outskirts of Pattaya City in Thailand as part of a joint operation between Thai and Italian authorities. Thailand's Crime Suppression Division detailed in a subsequent press release how Galdelli had opened a clothing retail business and had allegedly tricked prospective customers into sending him money by claiming to be famed Hollywood actor George Clooney. Back in 2010, Clooney had testified against his imposter in Italian court, accusing him and his partner, 45-year-old Vanya Golfi, of using his name and forged signatures to create a fraudulent fashion line. Galdelli and Golfi were also alleged to have been selling fake Rolex watches. The couple, dubbed the Italian Bonnie and Clyde, sometimes mocked the victims of their scams by sending them packets of salt instead of the fraudulent timepieces. Prior to their capture, Galdelli and Goffi had reportedly been wanted on an Interpol red notice after fleeing from justice in 2013. On the day of their arrest, officers surrounded their Thai compound in a stakeout using electronic surveillance and a drone. Upon being taken into custody in Thailand, the scammers were scheduled to be extradited back to Italy, where they both faced multi-year prison sentences for their crimes. Number 4. Otanael Mendoza On the morning of July the 6th of 2022, a man driving a dark grey pickup truck struck a teenage boy riding a bicycle in the area of Van Nuys Boulevard and Tupper Street in Panorama City, California. Following the collision, the motorist, 38-year-old Otanael Mendoza, allegedly showed the young cyclist a fake badge and identified himself as a police officer before ordering him into his vehicle. A witness tailed the truck and contacted Los Angeles police, who subsequently conducted a traffic stop near Sepulveda Boulevard and Tupper Street. The LAPD later reported that officers came upon Mendoza, the victim, and another unidentified man in the cab of the truck. The boy was taken to a hospital for treatment of the minor injuries he'd suffered in the accident while Mendoza and the other man were arrested. After being interviewed by police, the passenger was released. Mendoza, however, faced kidnapping charges and was consequently booked into the Van Nuys Community Police Station Jail, after which his bail was set at $100,000. Number 3. Krista Suchik Georgia woman Krista Siochik was taken into police custody on August the 23rd of 2018 for posing as a dentist for upwards of six years without a license. The arrest marked the second time in two weeks that the 47-year-old woman had been detained in connection to her fraud. Following her initial release from custody, more of the patients she'd illegally operated on came forward with allegations against her. Siochik's Paulding County Home and Marietta office were also raided with investigators reportedly seizing several boxes and a computer as evidence. Upon her second arrest, the woman faced 40 counts of practicing dentistry without a license and three counts of writing unlawful prescriptions. From as far back as 2012, the imposter put the health of her duped patients at risk by operating on them without the requisite knowledge or expertise of a dentistry practice. One of her victims reported having an abscess the size of a tennis ball in his throat after getting a pair of teeth removed by Siochik. In December of 2018, after additional former patients came forward to investigators, the woman and her husband, John, 
faced a 52-count criminal indictment under Georgia's Racketeering-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations, or RICO Act. As of the latest developments, it was unclear what stage of the legal proceedings the case had reached. Number 2. Edward Lewis Lyroff Florida man Edward Lewis Lyroff submitted an application for a code compliance officer position with the city of Port St. Lucie on March the 8th of 2018. The 46-year-old identified himself as a U.S. military veteran and claimed to have been awarded more than 20 commendation medals and badges over the course of his supposedly illustrious career. However, Port St. Lucie's Assistant Director of Neighborhood Services contacted Officer Joseph Byrne, a military veteran, to help review Lyroff's application. Byrne reportedly noted several irregularities on the man's submitted form prompting an official police investigation into the matter. It subsequently emerged that not only were Lyrov's purported medals and awards a complete fabrication, the man hadn't even served in the military to begin with. Investigators eventually discovered that Lyrov's elaborate fraud extended far beyond his falsified job application. The man had been receiving treatment from the Veterans Administration and had fraudulently obtained a Florida driver's license with a veteran designation as well as a Purple Heart vehicle registration. Lyroff was consequently arrested and charged with uttering a forged instrument, unlawful use of uniforms, medals, or insignia, and fraudulently obtaining a driver's license. He was booked at the Port St. Lucie Jail, where he was held on a $15,000 bond. In February of 2019, Lyroff was sentenced to four years of probation and was also ordered to pay over $4,000 in restitution. Number one. Jean-Claude Romand 18 years France native Jean-Claude Romand posed as a medical professional and researcher for the World Health Organization. The man used the free information services at the local WHO building in Prévesson Morens to fool people into thinking he was a successful and knowledgeable doctor when, in reality, he was an imposter who spent his days wandering. In January of 1993, when Romand was on the precipice of having his lies exposed, he borrowed his father's 22 caliber rifle, which he outfitted with a suppressor and gas canisters, and set out on a crusade to eliminate everyone who knew of his elaborate fraud. On the night of January the 9th, he allegedly used a rolling pin to beat his wife to death in their shared bedroom. The following evening, after putting his children to bed, Romand fatally shot them while they slept. The man then traveled to his parents' house, where he shared a meal with them before gunning them and the family dog down. Later that night, Romand attempted to finish off his murder spree by strangling his former mistress with a cord and spraying tear gas in her face. She successfully fought back against him, however, at which point he apologized for the attack and made her promise never to reveal the details of his murder attempt. Romand returned to his home, set it ablaze, and unsuccessfully tried to overdose on sleeping pills. Local firefighters were called to the scene at around 4 o'clock the following morning, whereupon they extinguished the flames and Romand was taken in for questioning. He was eventually charged for murdering his family and in July of 1996 was sentenced to life in prison with a mandated minimum term of 22 years. After 26 years of imprisonment, Romand was released into the custody of a Benedictine monastery and had an electronic bracelet placed on him to discourage him from trying to escape. Thanks for watching. Would you rather find out that your child is a pathological liar or that your house has been leaking toxic gas for months? Let us know in the comments section below.